Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Thursday, October 18th, 2012. I'm Darko. I'm going to cover the economy uh, in this first video and then hopefully in the second one we'll get into uh, some eugenics, social engineering, and I'll touch on the uh, election circus. First article I have is unemployment. The U.S. unemployment aid applications has jumped to 388,000. So I saw that one article, it was an RT article, saying something about 40% of Americans are... Uh, are uh, unemployed so I don't know about that number but I don't believe the number that the Labor Department puts out which is usually around eight to nine percent it's more about uh, 18 percent 20 percent so that's people that are unemployed and no longer collecting benefits so this is how they fudge the numbers and of course they uh, they put out little news blurbs to uh, people who don't know better just you know they don't have time to look into this stuff and they see a big headline California reported a large drop in applications pushing down the overall figure to the lowest since February of 08. Well, a lot of these jobs that are that people are getting are part-time work and uh, uh, low-wage jobs, basically. So um, that's how another way they're able to fudge the numbers. Jobless man sets himself on fire in Italy. In Greece, we've had uh, economic suicides, as I call them. Um, there has been actually a, um, at least one other self-immolation that I know of for sure. It could have been, could have been possibly two this year uh, due to economic... Um, uh, the economic environment. A jobless man has set himself on fire outside the presidential palace in the Italian capital city, Rome, highlighting the human cost of the economic crisis and the European state. You know, I hate calling it an economic crisis because really what it is is a completely engineered crisis um, from the top down. That's why, you know, the New World Order, as they call it, some people call it, uh, is order out of chaos uh, because it always seems to be some kind of crisis looming. Uh, and, uh, you know, the cliff, you know, they're calling now this uh, tax hike, uh, the fiscal cliff, right? Doomsday, Armageddon. And, uh, so just to get you all scared so they can offer their solution. But really, the, uh, the reality of it is what? Is um, consolidation. I mean, I've, I've went over the numbers for the past uh, year or so, uh, more than that. But the last year, you can see it. It's blatantly obvious that the wealth has been accumulated into fewer and fewer hands. So, And uh, more and more people are getting desperate. They're lighting themselves on fire. So, Okay, so when I scroll down, they're, they're actually talking about the other one, which was actually in Italy as well. So, too, said uh, he was 54, suffered 85% burns after an incident in front of the chamber of deputies in central Rome on August 11th, facing economic difficulties at the losing his job and had struggled for years with temporary work contracts that offer little protection or benefits. Then does that homeless guy have a higher net worth than you? I like this little uh, illustration. There's a homeless guy, um, you know, change, anybody got some change? Like, And they show his net worth is positive 273. So uh, this uh, girl with her iPad or iPod and that jogging, keeping healthy, uh, is negative two thousand dollars credit card uh, student loans negative sixty six thousand dollars just a happy guy with a suit going to his job it's a bank loan of almost ten thousand dollars and the woman who's saying sorry can't afford any change has multiple credit card debt of uh, negative ten thousand dollars so and then the article basically makes the argument uh, that you know it's good for people like uh, farmers and stuff like that I don't know if it's really good but but people that have assets and not people that just have mortgages and, and car loans and stuff like that. It says most people should avoid debt no matter what the Federal Reserve says. So, uh, Global food reserves have reached their lowest level in almost 40 years. This year, the drought in the United States and elsewhere has put even more pressure on the glo global food supplies than usual. It says for the six of the last 11 years, the world has consumed more food than it has produced. As a result, the global food reserves have reached their lowest levels in almost 40 years, and experts are warning that if the next summer is similar to this summer, that it could be enough to trigger a major food crisis again, the food crisis, right? So the solution, of course, is there's too many people. we got to uh, gotta um, have reproductive health care benefits, and you have to um, promote genetically modified food. And it's been projected that overall food prices will rise between 5 and 20 percent by the end of this year. One example is the drought hit U.S. ranchers. Many of them had to kill off large portions of their herds because they couldn't afford to feed them any longer. There was one story I covered where they were feeding them candy or something like that, hard candy. Besides grain, which is also, there's a, um, 
uh, a low amount of levels. Also, meat prices are saying are going to go up significantly as well. Uh, Angela Care says thousands are going hungry. This is from Australia. So they say that Australia's poorest are going without food sometimes for up to 24 hours. The report says up to 45,000 Australian households can't afford food and that 22,000 adults going without food for a whole day. Most weeks, families are uh, feeding their children on pasta and uh, cereal several nights a week. Some parents avoid sending their children to school if they're unable to provide lunch for them. Also says going without food in a country as rich as Australia is something we should all be ashamed of. And this is sad because this is part of this um, economic system, a social system, and it inevitably is to uh, lead to eugenics and calling off the population or useless eaters. So, uh, you know, because you can't just go wherever you want and start hunting and set up your own community or communes in the woods. You can't do that. They won't let you be free. They won't let you provide for yourself. You have to get on the grid. You have to get in the system. You have to get in a job. You've got to pay your taxes. You gotta gotta do this. You gotta keep moving. You gotta keep moving in the brave new world. You know, otherwise you'll get left behind. They said they talked to some of us in detail about their children's anger, uh, their sense of shame. The parents themselves talk about their own sense of shame and not being able to feed their children adequately. It goes on sometimes they would keep their children home from school because they didn't have lunch, but it says uh, this student says that she regularly skips meals because there may not be enough food to go around with the medication that uh, my husband is on for his blood pressure and his heart. I make sure he's fed first. Finishing up here with this article, she says food is a low priority but admits skipping meals does take a toll. Quote, I do get weak or sick from not having enough food, she says. Next, and that's one of the things too, they're trying to promote a meatless diet. Um, as well and uh, the elites themselves will also have organic beef themselves so and organic meat trust me uk food banks used by record numbers says trussell fuss again australia now this is the same date october 16th a record number of people received emergency food from uk food banks in the last six months a charity said then in the united states this article growing number of americans can't afford food says study and this is from uh, February 28th, but I thought it included in here. Here in the United States, growing numbers of people can't afford the basic of necessities, food. Most Americans said they struggled to buy food in 2011 than in any year since the financial crisis. Then this article from July, Congress said to take uh, food aid away from millions of hungry Americans. It, makes it was hailed by conservatives and moderates. They're pushing the 2012 Farm Bill. It goes on and says that um, it's in the name of reduction of the deficit. The House Agricultural Committee is proposing cuts of $16 billion from federal food stamps. The Senate version would cut $4.5 billion, even as they protect billions in crop insurance for large-scale farmers and insurance corporations. Cannabis factory couple who gave away their 400,000 pounds drug-dealing fortune to the poor Kenyan village are jailed for three years. The pair paid for uh, life-saving surgery computers in a hospital and schooling. Most unusual cannabis growing case in its types as a prosecutor and the couple in their 60s visited the village near the coastal town regularly. So yeah, they were illegally growing hundreds of plants in their farmhouse during a six-year operation. Instead of pocketing money, they spent large portions of it on the people in the Kenya village paying for life-saving surgery, computers uh, for an eye hospital, and schooling for poor children. Now. You know what's insane is that how come they don't have um, uh, people like when the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation go in there with vaccinations and, and sterilize, uh, try to sterilize people and circumcise them when they don't want to? Um, why, don't, why don't they get arrested and hauled out of the country, you know? Citigroup CEO walks off with $260 million after his bank loses 88% of its value. So he abruptly resigned today, which was on the 16th. Leaving the helm of the bank, he guided through the financial takeover of 2008. So that's that's the way of the world, man. Actor Bill Murray to CNBC says, I think we ought to be personally responsible. So this is kind of an interesting article from October 2nd. He says Americans need to uh, be more personally responsible for their well-being. I think if you can take care of yourself and then maybe try to take care of someone else, that's sort of how you're supposed to live. It's not a question of asking other people for help or being rescued or anything like that he continued i think we've got a sort of gotten used to someone looking out for us and i don't think any other person is necessarily going to be counted on to look out for us which he's right especially when it comes to like you know it's all about the cops the cops there to protect us serve and protect and they're never really there to protect you you know they're just there to um, protect the big banks when people start uh protest against the looting of their uh future right so it goes on and he says that uh the United States is a pioneer country, but that many seen 
uh, seemed to forget the discipline of early Americans and what uh, they needed to have just to survive. Occasionally it seeps in that they came in wagons from Illinois to Oregon or whatever, that they came in wagons and the wheels broke. He said the image leads uh, to such thoughts as, gee, that must have been hard for those women to push wagons up that mountain. And he goes on and says, that's what they had to do, he said. There was no option but to do it yourself. You had your uh, own responsibility. So, and of course, because it's the Hill, they're going to turn it uh, to a kind of political. And uh, Bill Murray, I mean, his message seems kind of libertarian. And they try to push him into a party or something like that. It says, well, his comments were broad. They seem to play into the message of Republicans, right? The neocons. Uh, but he goes on and he says that uh, he criticized both parties for their partisan bickering. He said they spent all their time just trying to destroy the other guy and not to work together but to humble and humiliate the other so that they can't have success. He says it's not working to serve anyone anymore. I don't want to sound like a Rotarian, uh, but if you're not some sort of common good and you're not servicing your sort of partisan alliance, you're part of what's destructive, you're destroying something. And this article from October 16th, the rise of the super rich is a global phenomenon. So is it really? Oh, it's the rise. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Uh, that's the economic crisis, crisis for some people, right? For a whole lot of people, right? The growing gap between the 1% and the rest of the U.S. population has emerged as a major issue in the presidential campaign, right? They're both elitists. They both, they both, they're funny by Goldman Sachs to say people to help pillage Americans. So you know they don't care about that. It's uh, likely to narrow much, much more no matter who wins. This is Christia Freeland, author of the new book Plutocrats, The Rise of the New Global Super Rich and the Fall of Everyone Else. She says it's not just the U.S., but it's happening in all Western industrialized countries big shocker here and crucially you're seeing the same phenomenon in the big emerging market economies the developing nations that's the those are the nations that are being built up um, uh, you know artificially propped up uh, with your tax dollars and stuff like that and in the guise of uh, trade free trade so but that's why they call it a brave new world there's many reasons for that term um, in a new world order but uh, you got to have a lot of money to be able to survive right to get yourself through the system to get yourself through the legal system to be able to just feed your family and yourself right or you fall behind right the super rich and the fall of everyone else the author says globalization is at the root of income inequality around the world also goes on and says inevitably that means the super elite see themselves as citizens of the planet earth remember that's what i've we've uh, talked about that before about we're citizens of the planet rather, rather than as citizens of the home country that's right they have no they have no uh, allegiances or anything like that. That's why you call them travelers or technocrats. So they're less concerned with the health of the middle class in the U.S. and any other country they call home. So meet Monta Musa of Mali, the richest human being in all of history. A new study says a new study has produced an inflation-adjusted list of the richest people of all time. And this uh, individual of Mali, all the way back to the 14th century, African king. Uh, today is named the richest person in all of history. Second on the list are the Rothschilds family, whose descendants are still among the richest people on the planet, starting out in the banking in the 18th century where they raped and pillaged England and bought the entire country, and then said that the money uh, has been divided between the hundreds of uh, descendants, many of whom are business leaders today. That's right. Well, eugenicists and uh, the guy who helped uh, bring us your all your medical institutions as far as education and also the educational sector so brainwashing third on the list is the richest americans to have ever lived were 340 billion today so yeah see they use all this money and that's the one thing they get things done they put it into eugenics they put it into uh, propaganda they have reuters i mean that's who do you think owns ap and reuters it's them it's rothschilds that's 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 what uh, what is king. That's what that's how you vote. You vote with your dollar. And if these guys have all the dollars or all the resources and the hard assets, they're going to be making decisions unless people decide to pull away from that system. And of course, they're going to get a club over their head when they try to do that in a police state, which is all being set up. This is all planned, you know. Um, as far as this uh, siphoning off of wealth and what we were just talking about and the rise of the super rich, this is no mistake. You know, citizens of the planet. These guys have no allegiance to nations. Um, you, you, I mean, it's kind of already like that, where corporations uh, are the countries. I mean, you even see people make these Freudian slips where they'll to try to uh, use the word country and they'll call it a company, because it is. So it's global corporations run the planet, and you have these technocrats and these think tanks, private think tanks and institutions, charitable organizations uh, running the planet. 
and it's just so it's just kind of a joke to think that uh, you're going to vote somehow and bring about change right through the political system so speaking of these guys in eugenics gat pulls a manifest destiny t-shirt and gets history lesson from outraged customers so now they know they don't need a history lesson they know exactly what they're doing when they're talking about survival of the fittest right join me in part two this is ggn i'm darko thank you